All right, here's the next one. Apologize for that. It's just what happens with the videos. The end. So that's what I did. I started simplifying my work. By the colors I chose, the way that I, I, I the brushes that I chose, the way that I moved the brush, the brush strokes, everything. I started basically decoding. I know it sounds a little pretentious, but to me that's what it felt like. Decoding, simplifying, very difficult uh, subject matter, very difficult themes. How can I how can I simplify them? As a cartoonist does, right? When a cartoonist is going to draw you or, or draw something, they simplify. They look for what stands out the most in you. So that's what I did. I spent most of my most of my career simplifying, making it every brush stroke, making it simpler and simpler. And sometimes I went too simple to the point that there was not enough work in it. And then uh, and and I test I started testing it in the market. You know started testing it in the marketplace is this something that that um, is this something that that people are even going to pay attention to or no so sometimes i do it i would do it way too simple to the point where uh and what i mean way too simple i mean very minimal very minimal brush strokes even even less and less brush strokes and then uh I started understanding something. People like to see that you put in the work. They don't mind that you simplify it. They just like to see that you put in the work. Now, if you see a Picasso and you think that he doesn't put in the work, uh, you may have not looked closer. Picasso's work is uh is very labor intensive but he makes it seem like it's not so that's the idea behind it how do we make the work more simple how do we make the work tell us a story but a simple one. (laughs) 
And can we even do that, you know? Too much, uh, too much outline on that nose. <laughs> yeah, this is a long, long bristle. In order to 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 move this way in a painting, you need long bristle you need long bristle brushes. Because otherwise you're gonna end up doing this. This is what most artists do when they paint. They do this. See, I don't do that. I do this. Or if I want to if I want to fill an area, I don't. I normally don't do this. I do this because there's long bristles in there. And so it lets me, it lets me, uh, not just paint, what I love about long bristles is that it's, it, it also lets you, uh, uh, illustrate, which is very difficult to do in oil painting unless you have long bristles. There we go. That's what I was missing. Sometimes I, 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 he changed something just a little, and and you nail it even more. Again, there's nothing wrong you can do, but you can you can uh, alter things. Always with the idea that there's nothing wrong you're doing. You're not doing anything wrong. You're, you're playing. Always with that idea. That you're playing with color. Fantastico! Molto bueno! Let's do another one. Do yellow, uh, what is it? A uh, yelly, <laughs> a jellyfish, <laughs> like a jellyfish. <laughs> Man, my Spanglish comes out. 
can't put it away long enough. All right, here we go. Jellyfish is uh, an interesting thing. Again, just a just a simple little little drawing, you know. <laughs> Very cool. I like little mushrooms, water mushrooms. Also, for those of you who uh, have been thinking about selling on Instagram, I have a I have a workshop on that. I have a workshop on how to sell on Instagram. I got a few DMs yesterday where people asking me, "Do you really sell on Instagram? Is it worth it? Does it work?" Uh, it works for me. And you don't need a big audience to sell on Instagram. I don't even think you need an audience to sell on Instagram, quite frankly. I think you just you just gotta want to sell on Instagram. Instagram is interesting because people will buy, but they don't buy directly on Instagram. They click on your links. If if they like what they see. Yeah, it looks tasty. Uh, what inspires? What inspired me the most? Uh, what inspired me the most was that feeling of the next painting might be slightly better, <laughs> and then I end up like uh, it ends up not being true really ever, uh, except uh, I, I I I think I get a little bit better very slowly uh, as years go by uh, and how do I decide what to paint uh, I have a list of things I have a list I, I, I do this full time so I have a list I prepare a list the night before usually sometimes in the morning and, and that's how I do it I have a list of, of subject matter that I prepare Because I, 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 if I were to do one or two paintings, I probably wouldn't have a list. But because I, I do so many, uh, I need a list. I need to prepare my day. And so, so I have a list of ideas, uh, photographs, sketches. Uh, also, I, I'm at a point right now in my career where, where, where I have to, I have to, uh, constantly challenge what I did yesterday so it's not like when I was first starting out the world it felt like the world might was my oyster you know like I could I could just uh, paint anything because I've never really painted it before uh, but 
at this point in my career, I, I have to really challenge myself because I painted thousands of paintings. And so I have to, I, not that I have to, but I, I want to because it's better. It's better for me, it's better for my collectors. Uh, so I am almost always in trying to outdo myself. And so I'm, I'm constantly trying to, trying to outdo myself. I'm in, I'm in beat myself mode. I'm trying to beat myself. Okay, if, if yesterday I painted something that was was pretty good, today I'm gonna paint something even better. And so I'm constantly under that type of pressure. That no one puts on me. I, I put it on my on myself because I want to. It, it it helps me stay sharp. I think, or at least it makes me think that. <laughs> It makes me think that. And so that's how I approach it. I think painting is very rewarding. I, I really do. I, it, not just as a career, but personally, as a, as, a, as a human being. It's almost like a spiritual thing for me. And I'm not, I'm not religious. And I'm definitely, I'm definitely not really spiritual. I don't, I don't really think I am. Um, but it feels that way. When people talk about spirituality or whatever, it feels that way. It feels like I, I found something that, uh, or I tap into something that is bigger than me. When I, when I, when I, when I paint for long periods of time, I tap into some sort of. Uh, Peacefulness, oh, some weird stuff. I don't know. It just makes me want to keep doing it. it. It feels like everything's all right. Thank you so much, Roberts. I really appreciate that. And so that's that's really my approach. Just. Finding finding some sort of peace, you know, when I'm painting. I, I, maybe 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 also because I'm um, I may be addicted to it and not not addicted like in a bad way, right? but I, I love feeling it, you know. I love feeling that that sense of losing myself and kind of like where, where people go hiking or that kind of deal, you know. People people are like, oh my god, I feel so free. Well, I feel so free when not when I'm painting. When I when I'm when I'm painting, um, and I'm not thinking. There's a sense of freedom that comes, and, and I couldn't even describe it. I think everybody has felt it in their life, or feels it. And so I'm always looking for it. I don't feel it all the time, but I'm looking for it all the time. That sensation of feeling my body alive when I'm painting. It feels like my body's alive, like I'm alive. There's no, there's no thinking process. There's no, there's nothing. It's just me and the canvas. And then it feels right. It feels right like when you do a good deed type of feel right. Oh, this feels good. You know? Not a prideful right. Not not a, not a pride type of thing, but like a like a real feel good type of thing inside your soul. Oh, this, this is actually pretty good. I, I think I want to do this again. And then next time, next thing I know, I, I I keep doing it over and over. And then next thing I know, uh, people start paying me to do it. Right? They start buying my paintings. And so, so it's, it might be a vicious circle by now. <laughs> a vicious cycle. <laughs> It might be a vicious cycle by now. 
where where people are like, well, I'm gonna pay you to do it. Please don't, because then I I don't want to stop doing it. At this at this point in my life, I feel like like this is what I need to be doing. Not not painting per se, art. I, I don't mind if I'm doing some other thing, but art art in general. It's just that this this occupies a lot of my my day because it's where it's where I earn most of my living in painting. So it occupies. It occupies a good chunk of my day, but our uh, art, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind, honestly, I wouldn't mind if I, if I was a sculptor or if I, not, not one thing, like if I sculpted or if I, if I drew, if I painted, it doesn't matter as long as it's art. There's something about it. Anything that helps me transcend my, my thinking process, that, is, uh, that actually transcends it, that, that moves it, right? That, that goes beyond it, not, not under it. There's a lot of shit that makes us go under it. Not hide from it, but, but move, move above, above it. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, I, I think that's where all, all sorts of biases come from. We're, 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 we're trying to we're trying to numb it rather than feel it and art makes me feel it not numb it something like that man I'm, I'm getting too esoteric too early it's like noon here and I'm already talking about some some deep ish some deep ish <laughs> Also, there's a sense of uh, uh, empowerment when you do something, when you do a lot of something. Um, you do it every day, you do it, you do it, you do it. All of a sudden, there's like an invincibility that kicks in. And I like that feeling too. It's like a flywheel. And this is part of what I teach now, uh, what I'm sharing with, with other artists in my, uh, in my monthly subscription that I keep, that I keep, uh, that I keep pitching. Uh, it's part of what I teach now because I'm, I'm moving into teaching what works for me. You know? Oh, this stuff works. Okay, well, maybe can I teach it to someone else? Maybe, yeah, let's try it. And so, all these little principles that I've learned, and I think they're principles because they, I can apply them. They're not, they're not one-offs, you know? I can apply them over and over whenever I want to. All these little things like, hey, if you do something every day, like paint or draw or whatever, but if you actually do it every day, and you take your time with it, you're not, you're not stressed, you're not, no, 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 no. Take your time with it and put in the hours. And if you do it every day, there's a sense of invincibility that comes from it. And when people say, can you paint this for me? Can you do this commission or whatever? You say, oh yeah, sure, why not? Because, <laughs> because it, 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 there's no fear around it. You develop a, a, a one of my mentors said, you develop a, uh, uh, a track record with yourself. That's the best, one of the best things you can do as a human being is, is develop a track record with yourself. In other words, you, that you, you learn how to keep the promises you make to yourself. And there's, there's huge levels of trust that happen when you do that. Huge levels of trust, self, self-believe and self-trust. You're like, oh, every day I'm gonna wake up at six in the morning or five in the morning. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I don't know. Whatever people do, right? Working out. I don't do that. I should probably do that. 
but I'm like, oh, I'm going to go uh, meditate for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to paint until it's nighttime every single day. Until it's nighttime. And sometimes even after nighttime. But I'm going to do that every day. And I'll rest on Sundays. Because uh, I'm religious, but Sunday's a cool day with the family, you know. <laughs> so I'll rest on Sundays. Uh, but uh, but six days of the week, I'm religious about this shit. You know, I do it every single day. And so there's a sense of yeah, there's a belief in myself, right? I, I don't even think that it's that you 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 don't get it because you paint well. You get it because you do it so much that you actually start tricking your mind into believing that you're the shit. <laughs> and, then, and then others others see your, your belief in yourself and they're like, oh man, I want some of whatever he's drinking. You know, I want some of that. And then that's, that's pretty much how I do it. Very simple. It's a very simple approach. Find something that you uh, that you think you can do every day, and just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Don't stop. And then uh, something good, right? Do it. Don't stop. And before you know it, um, others are going to start asking you about it. Like, hey, how can I get some of the stuff you're doing? Or, or, or how can I also do something that I love every single day? See, the, the trick is that you do it every day. And, and nobody teaches that. I, I, think, I think I really say nobody because most people are like, well, you know, if you do it once. No, it... The, Getting good, you have to do it every single modern effing day. Otherwise, you're not going to get good at it. And getting good is subjective, but, but feeling good about it is really where the power is. If you feel good about it, then you don't need to prove it to anybody else. The, the power isn't doing it every day. That's where the power is. You start doing it every day before you know it, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's not only, it's not only about, about making perfect, not only about practice being perfect, you develop a sense of trust. Even if, even if what you're doing is not perfect, even if you're just starting out, you're, let's say, quote unquote, amateur or whatever, there's a sense of trust that you develop that money cannot buy. That no, no one can give you that. It, it's something that, that comes from you. Because, because you start believing in yourself. You start... You, you, you develop a track record. With yourself. And, and so you start going, Huh, I think I can actually do this. But it, it comes from that place. It comes from... from I, I think the most important thing is, is believing in yourself, hands down. And, but, but it's very hard to believe in yourself if you're not doing it every day. Because when you start slacking, your mind tells you, see, it's not even going to happen. Or see, you're already, you're already backed up. Uh, you're kind of rusty. You, you haven't really practiced. And on and on. And that's where the fear kicks in. Fear only shows up when you're not working. I think that's why there's so many, uh, there's so much, uh, uh, there's so much stuff around I idle hands, like like don't sit there and do nothing. Idle hands are the devil's workshop or, or something like that. I think I think that's how the saying goes. I, I couldn't believe that more. Idle hands are a problem. As it becomes natural, not forced, yeah. 
Yeah. But, but there's something that, uh, what I'm what I'm focusing on more is is the psychological aspect of it, not not the evidence of because it, it might take you years before you get better. It might not be months. It might be years before you get better. But it only takes a couple of months before you start trusting yourself. And, and that's that's more. Um, it's more valuable to your to you and to, to your career. It's it's more valuable for you to trust yourself than to get better at it. You you won't trust yourself if you get better at it. Only if you if you only get better at it, you won't trust yourself. You only trust yourself when you when when you when you actually make things happen. When when you when you start showing up and showing up and 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 you actually start making things happen like like oh okay I, I, I uh I, I think this subject matter is a little better or or you change colors you change the approach in which you paint things start happening and so the psychological aspect of that I believe it's it's worth it. I mean it's gold it's gold dust the psychological aspect of that of showing up every single day is much more important in my eyes than be a, being a better painter be, anyone can be a better painter. All you have to do is just go and, and, and learn shadow on artists or, or, or you know, learn from their programs or whatever, and you become a, a better painter. But, but to trust yourself, that's different. <laughs> I like that. Man, I get all inspirational and ish. I try to. It helps me too. It reminds me. It, it, I remind myself when I'm talking about this. I'm like, oh yeah, I should probably, I should probably put that more in practice. What I'm talking about right now. <laughs> I think, I think that's why, that's why probably. Uh, uh, there's that saying that when you teach, you learn more. You you learn more when you teach. You actually because you're 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 sharpening those ideas, and you're looking at you're looking at it from different angles too. Every time that you tell the idea, you look at it from a different angle that you haven't seen before because you're talking maybe to different people or different questions are asked about it in a different way, and so it actually. It actually helps me too. Helps me a lot when I'm sharing these ideas. Some whales. Yeah, it helps when you say it aloud. Absolutely. Yeah, one thing is to to think about it, right? And, and, and it's a whole different thing when you when you actually verbalize it. Lots of my ideas, I just kind of keep them to myself. It's not until recently that I started doing more videos, but I would just kind of keep them to myself. And, and and I I'm not perfect. Like lots of shit that I say, it's stupid and it makes no sense. But every now and then I say something that I'm like, whoa, I can help you. So I'm aware of that too. Thank you so much, Constance. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Patty. Appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I'm gonna keep doing some work here. And uh, let's keep moving.
look at that. Look at that. Boom, boom. There's another little birdie right here. Oh, yeah. Another little birdie right there. Little, little birdie legs. on to this other one. Man, there's so much happening right here already. Look at that. Yeah, this is way too fun. The only uh, thing is that you have to go past the, the fear. That's the only, that's really the only thing. To go past the fear. Every day. The fear shows up every day. In different ways. You just have to go past it. I think, who was it? I think it was Stephen Pressfield with his book, um, The War of Art, I think. I think that was the book. It talks about the resistance of the artist. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. The resistance. The artists go through resistance, but the thing is that the resistance happens every day. And the only way you have artist block is when you fight the resistance for long periods of time. When you, I mean, when you, when you uh, give in to the resistance for for a few days or or months or whatever, whatever it is for you. If you give in to the resistance, you start having artist block. Artist block is very serious. It's very real. It, it happens when you don't work. And most people only show up to work when, to this type, this type of work, right? When the resistance is low. But... I'm telling you, you must show up to it when the resistance is low or high. Because it's the only way. Doing things like this when you don't feel like it or when you feel like you don't have inspiration or what's the use, what's the point, I don't know what I'm going to paint or whatever, is the worst thing you can do in your career.
You have to keep showing up over and over and over again, regardless of what it looks like. Regardless of the paintings, you might you might be doing some shitty paintings. Maybe that's how you feel inside. You know, you're doing some some shitty paintings. Uh, even more reason to show up. When when you're doing really good paintings, the resistance is very low because you're you're doing it every day. That's why you're doing good work. You, you do good work when you when you're doing it every day. Because that's where the ideas come from. They start cooking slowly. And then, and then good stuff starts popping up. But you won't get to that part if you keep resisting. You must show up when your work sucks. When, when you feel that way. Your work doesn't suck, but when you feel like it sucks. That's when you show up. Being a professional artist is really for the bad painters. I, 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 I told this to a friend one day and he told me that I was bananas. Good painters don't deserve this profession. This profession is really for bad painters. That's why every time I do a YouTube video or something, uh, there's always some, some random a-hole telling me that I can't paint. Uh, because it's, because it's, they're probably right. It's for bad painters. This profession requires so much discipline that only bad painters really uh, apply it. Good painters don't. And so usually good painters are hobbyists. They're really great at what they do or maybe they're complaining about not finding commissions or not finding jobs or not, not having people not care about them online or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to make an extensive video on this at some other time but this profession is for bad painters this profession is not for good painters the hobby of painting is for good painters the profession is for bad ones because the bad ones build the discipline to show up the, the good ones don't the, the good ones rest in their laurels and so they never they never build a discipline it's very rare when I see a very good painter building a career in art it's 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 almost too rare and people don't like hearing this they think that I'm bananas but I I'm not joking with you if you're a bad painter, you have a really great shot at this profession. If you're, if you're a very good painter, I, I think you have less of a shot. Because you're not going to want to put in the work. Good painters don't like to put in the work. Not, not, to, not to paint or to learn how to paint. The work that the profession requires. The profession requires a lot of work. Arduous hours. Donkey work. In and out. In and out. Brush, 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 brush. Only a bad painter would be okay with this. Some of the people that I see that are really thriving in this profession, most of the people that I see that are thriving in this profession are very bad painters. And they make it look like they're good, but they're really bad painters. I see an artist. He's here on, on I would never tell him that. He's here on Instagram. He's got a, a huge following. And he's got a huge following on, on YouTube. And I see the way he paints. And I can tell that he's a bad painter. He paints very nice. Very, very nice. But I can tell that he's a bad painter. The, the really good painters have about, the really, really good ones have about a thousand followers on Instagram, uh, almost never exhibit. I, I know a lot of really good painters. Uh, 
that can't make this profession work. And over the years, I learned why. They're very good. People that are very, it's, it's like, it's like, when I was younger, I, I used to joke around and, and I used to tell my friends I used to be a musician and I was like, beware of the pretty girls because they can choose not to be nice. <laughs> beware of them. Because <laughs> they're pretty already, so they, 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 they can choose not to be nice if they want to. <laughs> that, that, was the, that was the idea anyways. Um, they can be mean if they want to because they're pretty. And so... I, I think in, in, in a similar way, being a good painter is, uh, is makes, makes it almost impossible for you to get a, a career in art. See, if you're a bad painter, you know you need to put in the work. You know you have to. But if you're a good one, you can choose not to. Ken John, uh, John Celine Art says, My buddy, uh, Kadir Nelson, is a great painter, workaholic, and very successful. Oh, see? Good for him. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. No, I, I, I have friends that are very successful, and they're very good painters, too. But I'm talking about a, a majority. A vast majority of great artists that I see out there. Uh, really great artists uh, uh, what do you call them what is that thing called uh, very perfectionist very uh, I forgot what it's called Very difficult. Very difficult for those dudes. Yeah, it's it's a win-win when you when, when when someone's a, a really good painter and then they happen to be workaholics, it's like the perfect mix. But that you don't see that all the time. What we see most of is is very bad painters learning how to paint and making it work. And I love that because I, I personally love that. That's the underdog. I love that. I love seeing, I love seeing people making it really big in art, not able to draw a stick figure. I love seeing that because it shows the power of will. Yeah. It's the power of will in action. I have, I, growing up as an artist, I had lots of friends who were amazing artists. Amazing, just amazing. And would produce a piece of artwork maybe once a month or once a week. Something maybe this size, maybe once a week or once a month. And I always seemed to be struggling. And... and, and, and not that they were not willing to work. They were willing to work. They were just not willing to work as much as some of the other bodies that I knew, including myself. But we were kind of shitty painters. But we were, they, we were there in, day in, day out. Day in, day out. All hours of the day. And I remember thinking, oh my God, if I had this guy's talent, if I had this guy's talent, I'd be, I'd be killing it. Until time went by and I started realizing, oh shit, I don't need his talent. I don't need that dude's talent. I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. 
This is just an opinion, guys. I'm not saying that this is the gospel truth. This is just an opinion based on my observations of being a, 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 a full-time wow. artist for nearly a decade. Not nearly. It's going to be over a decade now. Uh, looking at people over and over and, and, and seeing what makes some people win and what makes other people not win in this career. And whatever winning is, right? Winning, winning for them might be, might be losing for me. So, I'm basing it out, out of what I think winning is in the career. For all I know, they may be winning, and, and, and I'm thinking that they're not winning. But winning for me, right? What I would consider winning at the career. And I, and I noticed the common thread. Most of the people winning at it were not, were not the best painters. As a matter of fact, most of them were very bad painters. They just found something and they stuck with it and they worked like hell. And I saw it over and over. I visited wow. museums, I visited uh, local museums, uh, not, not the big ones. And I would, I would get in the in the circles, no? I would become friends with, with the artists of the city. And I, and I started noticing something. there's nobody out there. I was like, oh my God. In order to make it here, you don't have to be a great painter. You just, you just have to outwork the rest. It's such a simple formula. Now, painters that are really great and outwork other people, well, those, those artists take the cake. Well, that's just an observation. Again, guys, this is not, this is just an opinion of mine. Don't take it as gospel truth. Figure, figure, figure out on your own. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just very aware, in my experience, bad painters have great careers. Good painters tend not to have great careers. They just tend to be good painters in art. And so I started thinking, oh my God. This career is for bad painters. I'm gonna do an extensive video on it because because <laughs> I'm really stuck on this on this topic. <laughs> so I'll, I'll drop it for now, but I'll, I'm gonna make a video on it and see what other people think. There's something to it. There's something to not being good enough. Or feeling, or other people telling you that you're not good enough, that makes you hungrier than everyone else. There's something, there's a spark in it. There's a little fire. But if you activate it correctly, it consumes everything. So when I think of when I think of, of, of this artist, I think of Warhol. Warhol was a horrible artist, a horrible uh, plastic artist, but a, a great artist, concept artist, great concept artist, horrible plastic artist. I don't know if that's the right word in Spanish. We call them plastic artists. Uh, uh, mediums, right? When to use mediums, uh, 
Picasso is another one. Picasso was horrible. Great concept though. Great imagination. Great ideas. Insatiable thirst for work. What's up, Steven? And then you have the rare ones, no? I think they're rare. They're those rare cats. You, you'll, for every 10 Picassos, you'll have a Sorolla. For every 10 Matisses, you'll have a... Uh, and this is not new, by the way, okay? This is old, too. For every 10 Matisses, you'll have a... Uh, a John Singer Sargent. Someone who was amazing, but also had the work ethic. Wasn't just an amazing artist, but, but had a tremendous work ethic. But this is old, you know. This is very old. This is this this goes be, before the impressionists. I remember I used to read about about the the uh, the romantics and 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 even before them, uh, the artists of the Rococo period. Uh, there's they, they always laughed about that. There there was there was great artists, great 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 artists with great talent that got lost in history because they didn't show up enough. They should have deserved a, a, a place in, in 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 history, but it really didn't. They're very obscure, except for some people that, that actually know those names or or, or or is a is a nerd for studying those those art periods. How did I make the peach color? The peach color came out of red, yellow, and purple. A little bit of purple. Because the, the, the purple starts making, depending how much you add a purple, starts making a somewhat diluted burnt sienna. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I like to get, some, some sort of diluted burnt sienna. And so, and you can also do it with applying a little bit of black, but it starts getting gray on you. It starts getting grayer. Red, purple, and yellow. And, and yellow. <laughs> That's my Spanglish again. And yellow. <laughs> and yellow. <laughs> okay, guys, this video is about to be over. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I think it's about 40 minutes of video here on Instagram. I'll be back. I got to go do some more videos for other platforms. But uh, I'm really happy you guys joined me. Thank you so much. Take care.